Alright guys, it's Krebs, and welcome to the Space Engineers Project. I'm hoping to make this a series with you guys, and it's going to be an interactive one. So, the idea behind it is that every episode, we're going to try to complete a different task. And we might actually expand these episodes over a certain number of videos. Because, depending on how big the task is, it might take a bit longer. And, well, I couldn't do that for two reasons. One, because it might be a bit of a long task, and that gives me a bit of leverage. Rather than having to do everything for one video, I could do it over a span of a few videos. But also, two, by doing it like that, then it gives me feedback from you guys. So you can say, oh, Krebs, you need to change this, you need to change that, you could do that better, you could do this better. And then I could try to apply that for the next video on whatever we're building. So, today's task that I'm setting out is building a dropship, okay? And let me give a bit of a backstory with this. So, say when Realism Mode comes out, and, uh, well, any sort of mode that has an incentive for actually attacking big ships and then extracting something from it. Say, for example, you have the Big Red over here, which, to be honest, isn't that big of a ship. There's much bigger ones on the Steam Workshop. But say you're trying to assault the ship, it has a high valuable target inside of it. That could be a person, it could be an item. Now, you could approach it from a different, few different ways. You could blow up the ship, and chances are you would blow up that high valuable target as well. That's the easy way, and it's probably the least successful way as well. The second of which is to actually get men inside that ship attacking uh, people or whoever is trying to stop them and then get that high valuable target and get it out. So that's why we're going to need a dropship, ideally. Because what we want to do is get it in fast, get the men in there, get the target and then get it out fast as well. It's just all about that fast sort of extraction. And so, what you're gonna do when you're assaulting a big ship like this, is maybe the usual entrances, like something like over here, might be barricaded. There might be some sort of door, something preventing you from getting in, and also, it's not gonna be... It's gonna be one of the more obvious ways of going in. What you'd want is the element of surprise. And what you'd ideally try to do is have like a schematic of the enemy ship, to know where the ideal, ideal place for a surprise attack would be. But if you're just chancing it, what you do is you just go over to some area and you would try to actually dig in. You could blow it up, put some explosives, blow it up, make a hole, then get guys in through there. Or you could try to get drills to drill your way through into it. That's the idea that we're trying to come up with here. So, what I was thinking for the dropship, it's going to have to be a relatively small ship on the size of, well, a bit bigger than these fighters over here because it's going to have to carry men as well. So we're gonna have the cockpit, and then we're gonna have a length, which is gonna be the actual holder area, and that's gonna have uh, where all the men are gonna be. But I'm also thinking, rather than just making at the back like a ramp or something that all the men come down from, I was thinking that we would make it a bit more like Armageddon style, where in the middle of the ship, the belly of it, we're gonna have an elevator that comes down. Alright, we're gonna have an elevator that comes down, and by doing so, we might also be able to drop down any tools with that elevator, and then we'll have easy access to the uh, ship. So, the idea behind the series is we're gonna actually go through all the steps on making a dropship. I am gonna improvise here, because I don't know how the dropship is gonna look like in the end. But, let's get it started here. So, we're gonna obviously have to start with a small ship. Something like that. And now, the question is, do we want to build this thing out of hard armor, or do we want to build it out of just standard armor? And well, to, to be honest with you guys, I think what we might do is just build this thing out of light armor. Uh, the reason why is because we want to have speed on our side, and if you build it out of heavy armor, maybe in the future it would be a bit heavier. And so, if it's heavier armor, you might need to have more thrusters in order to sort of cancel out the momentum that you would have. So we're going to build this out of uh, light blocks, and we've already got a light block over here. We're not going to think about any sort of paint schemes right now, but let's start off with something simple. Let's just get down the cockpit. And that's going to be one of the vital things to actually just get down first. I think the cockpit is around that sort of uh, design or length of blocks. I think it's actually three blocks like that. Yeah. And what we're going to do is just we're going to cut away from it. Now, we're not going to want this design to actually look really, really blocky. 
Um, but what we're gonna do is actually just make the lot layout a rough layout of maybe how long it's gonna be Maybe something like that. We might make it a little bit longer possibly Probably not shorter. Maybe this length maybe a bit longer But we're gonna make this have like a sort of sleek design behind it because we don't want to make it look like just the average sort of Joe average sort of spaceship so that's why we're gonna start off with building some sort of a sleeker design maybe some of these angled slopes at the front and by doing so as well I guess what's nice about doing that is that it gives more of a penetration if you do end up crashing into anything you've got the sort of penetration in the front but that's obviously not a main characteristic behind it I'm just trying to come up with some sort of explanation of maybe why that would be more efficient if anything so what I'm gonna do is every period uh, every periodically or so, like every every time I make a big step, I'm gonna come on over to it and then I'm gonna explain what we're doing and what else we're gonna be working on. So right now, I'm gonna try to make the cockpit area and make it look sleek and smart. Alright, so we've got the main idea of what the cockpit area is gonna look like. As you can see, I've put a lot of these sort of diagonals uh, together and this gives us a really nice slope along the side here. And also we've done it on the bottom as well. So right now it looks more like a spearhead or an arrowhead, if anything. But what we're going to work on next is actually the engine portion of this. So we're going to make the engines on the side. And we're going to try to make them actually look like... Almost like jet engines, like on, on a plane. But we're going to make them look more spacecraft-like. And they're going to be protruding out from the side. And they're going to be tailored towards moving this thing from front to back. That's not going to be moving it up or down or twisting it or anything like that. It's just going to be moving it front and back and we're just going to make it look really beast. So let's try to get the proportions of where we're going to want them. We're going to want it a little bit behind the actual cockpit. So maybe literally just behind it. We'll have it starting out over here. And by the way, I should mention we should also, we also put down the symmetry mode. So now we can build in symmetry and this is going to save a lot of time when we do it like this. And I think the only symmetry that we're going to need is along this axis here and nothing nothing else because we're not building a completely symmetrical ship on every single axis. It's just going to be on this one. And so what we're going to try to do is build our engines next. Now we got to get an idea of how big we're going to need to make this because we're going to try to put in some large thrusters and these thrusters are going to be what moves this spacecraft really fast, alright? So it's going to be kind of important that we get an idea of how big we're going to make these things. So let's try to put them on a reasonable, reasonably sized platform and I think something like that. I think something like that or maybe outwards like this. I think something like this, because it looks a bit more, a bit cooler when it's sort of hiding a, por a portion of it on the inside over there. I think that looks a lot better. Now, can we cover this up? No, it doesn't look like we can cover it up. So I'm actually thinking right now that what we could do is maybe, maybe move this one back, like so. Maybe move one back like so. And this is actually more aesthetics. I'm already thinking about aesthetics. But, I mean, there's quite a lot of practicality in this as well. Because these large thrusters are going to be giving us a lot of speed. A lot of speed. And I'm going to put this one just over here with a gap in the middle. I think. Because what I want to do is now cover this up. See, so you get what I'm trying to do here. I'm gonna try to cover this area up so you don't see the rest of the thruster because I think seeing the rest of the thruster sort of destroys the illusion of what we're trying to make uh, as you can see if we cover it up now all we can see is the actual thruster itself rather than the surrounding parts so I think that looks a lot better so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on I'm gonna keep on working on this and I'll show you guys how I've managed to make it Alright guys, so it's about half an hour or maybe even 40 minutes later and this is our progress. These things take freaking ages to make. Because I'm trying to make this look badass. I don't want it to just be a simple design. And by badass, I mean I want it to have like angled engines. So one protruding more forwards than the others. So as you can see, the middle one is more protruding forwards than the one on top and the one below. 
but I also want this to be reflected by the exterior armor. And what I'm gonna do is, because I've built it on the middle and also the bottom engine, I'm gonna go through it with the top engine with you guys, so we can make this exterior ar armor. And all it is, is it's just angled portions of, well, blocks. So we put in this corner block here, we put in that, we put in that, and then what do we do afterwards? Ah, we build in an angled thingamajig. Like this? How did we do it? How did we do it before? Ah, I think it's like this. Here we go. And there you go. See, it's, it, it moves forward and then it moves back. That's the sort of effect that we're looking for here. And I don't think we're quite done just yet. How did we do it at the bottom? We had another corner block that moved it back one. And then we had one of these diagonal blocks and we have another corner block. Okay. Let's try to replicate this then. So how did we manage to make it? Bah, 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 bah. Give me one second to orient this around. And I'm trying to get this... <laughs> it's so hard to manage this sometimes. These corner blocks. How did I build it down here? It looked like that. And then it went over forwards. Ah! Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a forward effect. I understand now. So like this. I think it's like that. Yeah, it's like that. That's exactly what we're looking for. And now we have this portion moving on forward. And so all we'd have to do is continue building just like as we did with this protruding section. Um, and also back here, and we have to move it back. But as you can see, it's not fully complete. We've got blocks that are mingled in, and this is just my trial and error attempts at trying to make this thing. So yeah, we're going to cut over to my next progress. Alright, so here we are. This is where we've progressed so far. So the front of the engines is done, and this is going to stop us from moving forwards too fast. That's going to be suppressing it. And now we're going to have to actually think about putting in the engines that are actually going to be propelling us forward. So, based off of this design, I didn't want it to be like an absolute, I don't know, like, sphere or circle looking thing. Because if I kept on going with the way that this, the, these engines were turning out to be, and I tried to make it in the opposing direction, then I think this thing would look kind of like a blob. So the effect that I want to get is maybe making this thing almost like a comet or an asteroid in a way. And what I want to do is I don't want to make the engines that are going to be propelling this thing forward just like these ones, as in, you know, it's just, just directly behind them and then it's like complete symmetry. I want to have it a little bit different so that I want the engines to be going along at an angle with the uh, shape of the body. And now I don't have the shape of the body exa exactly perfect, but as you can see, I think this is sort of like a general outline how I want it to be. I want it to be uh, the thickest, the most wide at the front, and then it will get uh, more and more angled until it comes to a point at the back. And it might not be a direct point, it might actually be like, it might have two sort of fins or two tails coming out the back. It'll just make it look really cool as a dropship. Now also one problem that I have is also the front. I don't think the front looks too awesome right now. So what I might do is actually do this after I've completed the rest of the uh, hull. I might move the cockpit a bit more forward or I might change the design a little bit more just to go in line with the rest of this thing because yeah, right now it looks pretty damn decently from the front and I think the overall shape gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like. I think it's gonna look pretty damn badass so uh, what we're gonna work on next is actually making these engines come in at angles so the way that I was thinking about it is thickest at the front it's just gonna get more and more compact as we go to the back so how about immediately what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some of these angled blocks here like so but now we've come to the end of the first engine, and so what we're gonna do is start making this come in at an angle. And we're gonna make it go gradually in, not like, you know, just all of a sudden it's gonna just go to the point at the very back where the tails are. But it's just gonna be a gradual sort of thing. And that's gonna be the first slope of it going inwards. And then every so few or so blocks we're gonna add more and more graduated uh, sort of blocks moving it inwards, but in between that we're gonna have our engines that are gonna be moving us forward So there's gonna be a lot of space 
to actually move us forward, right? So this is where we are right now. I've completed a lot of the back engines, but there's still more that I want to put on. But you're starting to see the shape of this thing. Originally I was thinking about putting maybe like two tails at the back, but I don't think it's really going to look like that. And I've actually made a design amendment in my head. I actually want to have a hatch at the back so it can like drop down and touch the touch the surface, whatever it might be, and then people can easily just go up and down it. It's like a ramp almost. So we'll have that, but we're also still going to have the elevator. I'll fit it in there somehow. But as you can see, the design of the ship is really starting to come into form. That thick thickness at the front, and then it gets sharper and sharper down the line towards the uh, back. But I'm also thinking about doing something when it comes to the height of it as well. So as you can see, it's quite bulky for, uh, on the height side as well compared to the back of it. And again, we're going to have this gradient that makes its way along to the back. And it's just going to make this thing look really thick at the front and then thinner and thinner as it goes towards the back. Cockpit wise, I've been still thinking about what we're going to do. We might keep it like this. We might actually elevate it one block. And in that case, if that happens, then we might make just a slight ramp with a diagonal on the inside. Just so you can walk up to the back door of the cockpit really easily. But as you can see, it's really starting to come into shape, this, this thing. But it's still far from completion. We've got to put the engines on, we've got to actually color it, we've got to finish the uh, elevator in the in the middle of it, we've also got to get that drop down door as well. But as you can see, I originally thought this would only take one episode to do, but uh, it's looking like it's actually taking quite a while. I've probably spent about an hour and a half, maybe two hours on this thing so far. And yeah, it just goes through so many iterations. You do one thing initially, but then you gotta fix fix it around. It's like carving, it's like carving a sculpture out of a piece of stone. That's that's the sort of thing. But anyway, the idea behind it is it's gonna be a dropship, and you're gonna be able to attach onto whatever you need to, whatever surface, with some landing gear that I'll put on eventually, and then you'll be able to either use an elevator that goes straight on down. And this elevator might have like a hole in the middle or something, so you can just bore holes right through. Or you could use the back side of this thing, which will have a, a ramp door that just drops down. So that's what I'm thinking with this with this thing, with this dropship, alright? So we're going to end it there for now. Tell me what you guys think. This doesn't need any more amendments. I don't know. You guys tell me. And we're going to finish it off for the next episode, okay? This is Grebzy, and I'll see you guys later.